Hey everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. Welcome back to how to build a fully 3D printed kit with the 2024 Mustang Dark Horse. Let's get to work. Okay, let me show you what to do when you've got a failed print. So when you've got a failed print, um, this is the, the resin vat that has the resin in it. And when you've got a failed print, one of the first things that you have to do is you have to take the resin out. So there is a, quite handily, and you want to do this every time when you're done 3D printing, because you don't want to have, um, you don't want to leave resin in your 3D printer for like long periods of time. So when you're done printing for the day, or if you know you're going to be printing for a few days, like I've had resin in here for the last few days because I've been printing. Um, some of the prints take a long time, like the body took, the big piece of the body took five hours, uh, and that's just because I have a slow printer. But there's a little pour corner to pour the resin back into the bottle, which is what I'm doing right now. There we go. So all of the resin that I could get out is back into the bottle. And now it is time to clean this up. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen, that's the 3D print that's stuck to it. So a lot of times you can just push from the bottom and it will just pop off. And there it goes. Bink. You hear it go pop. And then the failed print comes off. And that's that. Um, now you're ready to clean this as you normally would. Um, I use a microfiber, uh, and uh, after I basically uh, get this off, if for whatever reason just pushing from the bottom does not get this off, your uh, 3D printer will most likely come with a little plastic spatula that is safe for scraping, and you can uh, scrape it off. But this is garbage. And then now what we will do is we will spray this with... Uh, some alcohol and then I'll go in here with my finger and I'll kind of wipe the FEP screen because it is fragile you don't want to scratch your FEP um, and they do you do buy that's one of the things that you replace they say uh, just about every bottle of fluid or so so every time you use a whole bottle of resin which is a lot of printing by the way especially if you're just printing little parts um, you would change the screen, the FEP after every bottle of, uh, and they're relatively easy to change. There's some screws here and it comes off. You put the new one on and, and you're done. Um, so now that is fairly clean. I'm going to go in with the microfiber now. I've got microfibers that I dedicate just to resin printing because once you've got resin on them, you don't want to use them for anything else. And I will just wipe this out. And then the back. And then once you clean the back, don't set it down on anything until you put it back in the printer. Because this is the part that touches the LCD screen where, the, where it flashes the UV light to cure the resin in the shape that you want in the layers. That's that. This needs another go. Needs another wipe because it's a little cloudy. So, and I'll wipe it and then I'm done. And I'll let the alcohol dry and then it gets to be a lot more clear. And then I would take a separate microfiber that has never seen the uh, resin vat. And I will use that to wipe the screen on the 3D printer. So that's what happens when you get a failed 3D print. And then this resin can be reused. Some people strain the resin because uh, you can get little chunks of debris in it and that can cause a print to fail. I haven't run into that problem yet. So I'm not currently uh, screening my resin. I may start just to avoid that potential issue. But uh, there you go. And this is Anycubic's resin. My printer is made by Anycubic as well. Um, this resin I find works very good. I like it. Um, you have to be careful with the resin that you buy. You have to make sure you get the correct UV wavelength for your printer. Mine is 405 NM, whatever that is. Um, and so any resin that I buy has to be 405 NM. 
Uh, this is the clear resin that I bought. Uh, I made sure that it was 405 nm, and it is. But um, for whatever reason, this just won't work for me. I had failed print after failed print after failed print. I tried several times, and it just wasn't working. And then the second I switched back to that resin and printed the very same parts with the very same file with the very same slicing, printed just fine with no issues. So I don't know. I'm still experimenting. It could be me. It could be that resin. Any cubic does make clear resin, so I am going to try some of that and see. So that's what to do with a failed print. Let's get back to work. Okay, so we're getting started on the dark horse, and uh, I've got all of the parts that have been printed uh, that I'm using here, and uh, I've got them grouped pretty much by color, the things that are going to be silver, the things that I'm not sure, I'm not sure what color I'm going to do the calipers yet, the tires are going to have to be flat black, of course, the wheels um, are going to be a dark tone, I haven't decided yet what they're going to be. And I do believe I'm going with a black interior. I would like to have some kind of a color accent. I'm going to look at some online reference photos of the uh, Dark Horse and see if they do that. Um, and then I've got to get the, uh, as I mentioned before, the dashboard. Um, I'll get like a decal for that. Do some highlighting. It'll look very convincing. Look good. Um, I am still experimenting with clear resin on these windows to see if I can come up with... Uh, actual clear glass I managed to acquire some any cubic actual clear resin so I'm gonna give that a shot and see how it goes but for right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and glue this body together I, I did order a larger 3d printer one that can print the whole body. And I am going to reprint the whole body with the new printer when it arrives. But I want to show you that you can do this with smaller resin 3D printers that print the body in smaller pieces. I think just about any resin 3D printer out there can print this. Um, it's the whole thing that it has a hard time with. So um, some of the uh, 3D kit makers online offer multiple options as i've shown you already with this one there were several options you could print this as a separate piece this as a separate piece or this together as one piece depending on what your resin printer can handle but i think just about most resin printers can handle this so i'm going to show you how to do this i'm going to glue this i'm going to prime it i may not paint it i don't know we'll see uh or i may paint it a different color um i could have two bodies to go back and forth with if I wanted to have two different colors. That's the nice thing about 3D printing too, is you, you know you can print as many of these parts as you want. You want an extra set of seats in a different color, print an extra set of seats. You want an extra set of seats for another build, hey, print an extra set of seats and put them in something else. Um, the seats that came with this kit are wonderful, as are the steering wheel, and uh, even the interior tub and the dashboard could probably be modified to fit other Mustangs if you wanted to upgrade uh a a 124th or scale this is 124th scale he does offer it in 125th as well um you know you could modify this to fit just about anything so my plan for this um it's right on the door seam so that's perfect um the only thing is there will be some body puttying down here because obviously this is not a door seam but from here up is door seam so that should be fine it won't need any putty which is a really smart way to to do it the way he sliced this body into multiple pieces along the door line was a good call um and then you're just left with a little bit of putty down here and uh and that'll be it it'll look good uh, so my plan is to do some crazy glue first i'm going to do one side at a time um so i'm going to crazy glue this side and i'm going to let it sit and cure and um i've done some sandaling and some fiddling to get it to look this good to get it to fit this good but just some minor sanding it wasn't very major um, and then from the inside, I'm going to do some styrene maybe, or some metal rod epoxy across here to give it some structural rigidity, um, to make sure that it can withstand all of the sanding that I'm going to be doing and the priming and the painting and, and it needs to be able to be manipulated as if it were one piece. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start right off the bat with some Gorilla Super Glue. Um, super glue is your friend. Uh, you will not use model glue on this. You can put model glue on this till the cows come home and it is not going to stick because this is resin. It is not plastic. 
so it will not melt. You know, obviously everybody knows how model glue works. It melts the plastic and bonds it together. Um, you're going to need crazy glue for uh, for this. And I believe I have opened this. This is a brand new tube that I bought just for this project. And, uh, and nothing is coming out. Oh, here we go. It was just a little slow to start. That's all. This is a thick, crazy glue. I don't know if that's going to help us or hurt us. It says it's the Impact Tough Formula. Well, I can always do some sanding on it after. If for whatever reason it doesn't work. Well, that was relatively easy. Oh! Now I've got glue on the outside of the body. Which, the body hasn't been sanded yet. Um, on purpose. Uh, because I wanted to... I knew... Because I knew this would happen. <laughs> so now I am just going to hold this for a few moments. And see if maybe it'll set. No, it ain't gonna set down. I might need to get some accelerator out and have some accelerator ready to go. I was hoping that this would cure fairly quickly, but it is my first time. 10 to 45 seconds. Okay, well, obviously it's been 10, so we must be going for the 45 on this time. So I'm going to try to stop moving it. That would be nice. Hold still for 45 seconds. So I'm going to hold still for 45 seconds. And, uh, and we'll come back and see how I do. Okay, so the secret ended up being running a bead of crazy glue down the inside and then hitting it with a little accelerator, super glue accelerator, which uh, that actually isn't the kind that's there. This is just an old bottle that I had. This is the uh, what I used, the zip kicker, zap zip kicker. And um, so now that is one piece thankfully, and looks pretty good. Uh, just a little body puttying on the bottom here, and uh, and that's going to look marvelous on the uh, on the chassis. Um, so now what it'll be time to do is some reinforcing supports here and here with, uh, with just some regular old epoxy, some two-part epoxy that I've got uh, hanging around here somewhere. I've got to go find it. Oh, it's right here. I'll use some uh, some two-part epoxy and uh, probably some sheet styrene or maybe a little bit of metal rod and just kind of hold it in place and uh, let the resin cure. And then this will be strong enough for me to feel better about, you know, sanding on it and uh, putting it in the, um, the body holder that's going to put pressure on these outsides. I'm still determining whether or not I'm going to use that because uh, I have one of those standard old, you know, to my... Uh, paint stands and I have some concerns about it exerting outward force on the resin um because I don't know oh, it seems to be okay but I don't know how much I like that uh for an extended period of time I might just use something to go and attach to the roof the inside of the roof um but we'll see we'll see but uh this is going to need some sanding and some primer because there is some resin uh, texturing, which is normal, and uh, and sands right off. Um, and then uh, and then this will be good for primer. I'll put on probably a couple nice thick coats of primer so that I can wet sand the primer, get a really smooth surface for the paint, and then uh, and then go to paint. But this is the uh, hey, this is a 2024 Mustang Dark Horse in my hands that isn't even available and will not be available for even people to buy until the end of this year. Um, and the model kit manufacturers are not going to have this anytime soon, nor are the resin manufacturers. Not for a while. The 3D guys, they can work off of a rendering. They can work off of a picture from a car show. It's amazing what these guys do. And here it is, the Mustang Dark Horse in my hands, ready to go. And we're going to build it. Let's get to work. Okay, so what I have done is um, I have just put a little body putty on there just to get started on the sanding. But before I want to, before I start sanding on this, I want my 
my styrene strips. So I've cut some, it's just some regular 0 .020 thick. So it's half a millimeter thick styrene. I think that'll give me plenty. And what I've done is I've cut it into two little strips uh, um, because I want it to follow the curvature of the body a little bit. The inside of the body has a curvature to it. Um, and so then I have made two little piles of my uh, five minute uh, epoxy resin. And, uh, and we're going to go get to work with that resin before it, uh, it hardens. So we're going to mix it. And then we get five minutes. The clock is ticking. Um, and this stuff does go off pretty quick. Five minutes is what they say. I think it might take a couple minutes longer than that. But, um, but I'm always done with it within five minutes. I mixed up enough to make sure I had enough for at least one side. Maybe both sides. So we'll see what happens. But you got to get it all mixed real good. All right. So there, I got a big glob of resin. And we're just going to start applying this big glob of resin to the inside of the body here. And this stuff is very sticky right off the bat. Um, so you don't have to worry about, like, once you push this in place, it's, ain't, it's not going to move. And we'll put this one in there. Kind of smoosh it down. I love that word. Smoosh it down in there a little bit. I'm making sure to hang back away from the wheel well so that I don't interfere with the chassis at all. Um, and then that's that's that. So we'll let that cure. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side right now. And then afterward, I'll go back in and see if I can apply any uh, over the top of the styrene. This stuff is uh, is real good. And once it cures, it is going nowhere. I have used this on some model kits where the body was very difficult to um, to attach. Some old MPC kits. Some of my old MPC kits have epoxy in them, uh, holding that, holding them together, um, because they just they had so many fit difficulties that when you tried to put the body on, it was just there was just no way. So you get a little epoxy going. I'm actually liking the way I did this side a lot better. There's a lot more resin on this side, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna apply some resin right over the top of this styrene it's no problem it'll still there's plenty of resin underneath the styrene and now there's plenty on top of it too well it's going to go hard on the masking tape so there's no point in having leftovers at this point but uh, yeah when you're working with resin bodies you know you've got two choices and they are crazy glue or epoxy. Because model glue doesn't work. Tamiya Extra Thin doesn't work. And it's really too bad because Tamiya Extra Thin is uh, so nice on um, on styrene when you're when you're gluing bumpers on or something and you're working bare plastic to bare plastic. The, uh, the Tamiya Extra Thin is so nice. So there's what I've got. Uh, and that, once that hardens in, in five to ten minutes... Um, that is going to be, uh, wonderful. And then what I do is I leave the tape out here, right? Because this was mixed and applied the same time that was. So I can wait and I can see like, oh, it's almost cured when it starts to get tacky. Or if, uh, when it's fully cured, oh, it's fully cured. Then, you know, without experimenting with that, you can tell by right here, you can leave the body alone and not mess with it. I'm just going to take one more look. It's always when you take one more look that you see something. That you missed. No, this looks fine. That looks fine. That is going to result in a marvelous bond. And then I can sand on it without worrying about breaking it apart. Fingers crossed. Okay, we'll be back with more. So I'm just doing some sanding now. The epoxy has cured enough. To where I feel okay working with the back of the body here. And you can see there appears to be just a little bit of texture still here. But but I can't feel it. It's weird. I don't know how to describe it. So what I've got is I've just got some 3M fine uh, sanding sponge here. 
and it is smoothing it right out real easy. And uh, I think that's ready for primer. So I just wanted to show you guys, like, I thought sanding this might have been a little bit difficult, but, um, you know, with the sanding sponges and it doesn't take long, you do want to be careful with this resin dust because it's no good. <sighs> um, and as soon as I'm done sanding, I'm going to deepen some of these panel lines with the scriber as well. But this is just sanding smooth so easily with the 3M fine, which is fairly rough. Like, I would never use this on styrene. Um, this is just too rough for styrene. But for resin, it does the trick. And that is, it feels very smooth to me. Even though you can see the texture of the print, um, it's, it's smooth as can be. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is, um, hey, you know what? There's no mold lines because this was printed, not molded. So uh, you don't have those typical lines in the corners and around the windows. None of that. It's um, not here. And I'm just going panel by panel. So now I'm doing the rear fender. And I'm using... You can't use your eyes as a guide. You have to use your finger because your eyes deceive you because you can still see the grain of it, the print, even though there's nothing there. It's perfectly smooth. Wow. It's it's impressive how, uh, how easily this is sanding. Even around the shark fin antenna, I was able to uh, get smooth. I'm not sanding in here because the glass lays in there. Um, so you won't, uh, see that. It'll be black with the, uh, glass that I either 3D print or use just some clear sheet plastic. <sighs> and I'll get this panel line after. But yeah, wow, this is, uh, this is great. smoothening right out very easily so I'm going to keep doing a lot of sanding though I should be done with this whole body in you know maybe 10-15 minutes of sanding and it'll be done it doesn't take long to uh, to get it smooth you're not working with it for a long time like each panel each panel takes only a minute or two to to get smooth. See, that one's done already. I did the whole back of the car, just a couple minutes here. So, uh, so we'll be back. So I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about a few things that I have learned. First of all, um, in video number one, you saw me washing parts in my bathroom sink, and I had some comments from, from some very knowledgeable viewers uh, pointing out the error of my ways, and I will no longer be washing out my parts in my sink. What I'm going to do is, uh, one of the viewers that uh, had re had replied to me, uh, Scale Adventures, came up with it. He, he posted a very good idea. You know, you wash them out inside a container, which I have plenty of containers. Um, and then you set that container out in the sun, and it hardens whatever resin is in there, and then you just throw the resin away in the garbage, um, which is substantially better for the environment and substantially better for the drains. I live very close to the Hudson River. The last thing I want to be doing is uh, is putting any uh, any chemicals into my local water. So so thank you very much for the good information. It was something that I had not thought of. Um, I switched to the water-based resin thinking that that would be okay and that would alleviate the problem, but upon doing more research I have discovered that that is not the case. So when you are cleaning your parts, clean them in a container um, scrub them up really good and then set that container out in the sun and whatever resin is in there will harden. Um, and then you can uh, dispose of the resin and the liquid separately, uh, which, is, which is the way to go. One thing I want to mention right now is about resin curing. Someone asked me, do I cure my resin parts? I did not show that part on camera in this video, but I did show it in the how to 3D print carburetors for the 1967 Camaro Z28. Uh, 
and it's just a white box that's next to my 3D printer and after I remove the parts from the supports I take those parts and I put them into the um, the cure box and it runs for 10 minutes bombards the parts with UV light and then they are cured. I'd like to talk briefly about printer settings keeping in mind that they will vary from printer to printer, resin to resin and environment to environment um, I found something online called the cones of calibration which help me dial in my exposure time that's one thing that you're going to need to make sure you have right. The other one is the slice thickness. I'm using a .05 you can, however, use less. Uh, the, the closer, the, the smaller the slice, the longer it takes to print, but the better looking the part is. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you Google 3D resin printer settings, you'll find a whole bunch of information. Okay, so I've been priming and sanding, and um, I've got this looking pretty good. It's ready for paint. There are still a couple of small imperfections, here and there and everywhere, but I think that I can polish them out of the clear when it's done. Um, so uh, so what I've selected for a color, I really like that blue that was in the commercial ad as like a dark, a dark blue, but I, I'm not going to go quite as dark. I came across this paint in uh, Hobby Lobby, yeah, for oh, $1.59, and, um, and it's called Midnight Blue. And I think that it is a winner. It's uh, It has this steely slate color, with this being the Dark Horse Mustang. You know, I thought that would be kind of cool. I also got this one, same day, same price. Um, and this one is a, a different blue um, that I really like, but this is definitely for another car. I want the Dark Horse to be exactly that dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to see how it comes out. And if I like it, great. If not, I might just add a couple of drops of black into it and uh, and see what we get. Um, the body is the only thing that needs to be um, painted. The side view mirrors are black on the dark horse um, and they're going to be black on my dark horse. So, so the only thing that needs to be painted is this body um, and the front bumper, rear bumper are already all one piece. So I don't have anything else to paint except that one piece. So, uh, so let's get a few coats on it and see what it looks like. So I'm going to take some of my, uh, my airbrush thinner uh, from Vallejo. Just about any thinner works with this water-based paint. Even, uh, even um, regular water, distilled water, uh, would work just fine. I've used that in the past too, but I, I like to use a real deal thinner. It tends to bond with the paint a little better so you don't get what they call seeding where the paint just kind of globs up a little bit. So now I am mixing this together. Oh, and it's, it's actually, um, as I'm mixing it, it's actually darkening up a little. I really like this color. I might not need any black. That's rather peculiar. It, uh, it's darkened up a little bit. Hmm, looks good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it just the way it is, too. Put a little bit more thinner in. Still just a little bit too thick. You're looking for that milk-like consistency. Um, you want it to drip off the uh, stir stick. But, um, but you don't want it all to drip off the stir stick. You want a little bit to hang. So this is looking marvelous. Just needs a little bit more. And if you over thin it, uh, you know, just put a couple more drops of paint back in. Of course, you have to be careful. You do that enough times, you end up with a full cup and enough paint to paint, paint four model cars. But at the end of the day, you know, I've used one one twentieth of this dollar fifty nine bottle of paint, so uh, not really much cost when I use these these water based paints, which um, which which look nice. And the the metal flake in these is typically very small. So it's not um, not out of scale on a quarter scale car, which is uh, which is nice. A one twenty fifth scale or one twenty fourth. I think I'm one twenty fourth with this one. He did have every every size there was. This stuff is um, is staying thick. I needed to get just a little thinner, 
and it is not cooperating. It is just staying thick. Oh, there we go. I must have reached a point where the thinner started doing its thing. Let's see. Yes. Perfect. And again, I'm spilling it all over the place. That You know, it seems like every single time I'm mixing paint on camera, I, uh, I spill paint. But it's water-based, cleans right up. Nice and easy. Yep, so this is my paint. And uh, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes and clean my finger. And then we're going to go to the spray booth after this sets up. See you there. The other thing that I learned is um, about sanding on these bodies. So I have been talking in this video thus far about it feels smooth, but you can't see, but you can still see the lines. Well, after you paint it, you will still see the lines, even though you can't feel them. So what I learned is you need to do more sanding um, till you cannot see those lines. And I did more sanding after the fact. And um, in fact, I printed the body in one piece when my larger printer came. And I ended up ruining that body uh, by sanding too much with a uh, power sander. And learned that, it ha number one, it has to be done by hand. And number two, it's going to take more time. Uh, so I put in an extra couple of hours of sanding on that body and I got it looking substantially better than it did thus far in this video, but you still can see some of those lines. So behind the scenes, I am working on the 1972 Ford Maverick that I 3D printed. I'm doing that right now. You'll see that video uh, coming up, you know, uh, maybe, maybe late May. Uh, early June, you'll see that video. But um, that car I have sanded on, um, and what I have discovered is that if you use a 320 grit, uh, something a little bit rougher, uh, so a 320 grit does it really nice, uh, and then knock it down to a 600, and then knock it down to a 1,000, uh, you can get rid of those lines fairly efficiently. I'd like to mention here, the um, this ended up being a little too light for me. I wanted it darker, so I ended up mixing in uh, some some darker gray as well as some black to a darker color and respraying. And that's going to wrap up video number two in the how to 3D print an entire kit using the beautiful 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Come on back next week for video number three where we will finish this up. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Send me some comments. Send me some questions. I really value your input. And hit that bell so you get notified when new content drops. Also, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, all under Angelo's Workbench for additional content. See you next week.